it's cool. It ain't it ain't like being with a black woman though. It's it's not it's not uh it, of course it depends on the the person, but um and you're a white woman yeah, I had a white woman telling one time it hits different. <laughs> I said, oh, it does. Oh, okay. I said, you know what? I, I believe you when you say that. <laughs> Wait, who said that? She said that? Yeah, she said that. She said, when she's with a uh, uh, a black man, it, it the sex is, is, she gets stimulated differently versus being with a white guy. And I said, you know what? I believe you when you say that. There's no end no buts about it. They already yeah. know that. I'm trying to fuck y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and white men, they, they try to like, don't even look my way. I turn around. I turn. I I had dudes who tried. White men try like, nah, no. Welcome to another episode of the Love Can't Wait podcast. I'm your host, Sharp Game, so like and share this episode. P.S. My way, I would appreciate it if you would leave me a five star review in iTunes or anywhere where you're listening to the show. So, with that being said, any questions, any concerns anyone you would like me to bring on the easiest way to connect with me is in my DMs on Instagram just click the link below and hit me in DMs or send me an email at renegademoney at gmail.com so those are the two easiest ways to get at me and connect with me. That's renegademoney at gmail.com or hit me in the DMs on Instagram, which you can find the link below. So with that being said, today I have a special guest. She used to work in the sex industry. She used to be a, a dancer. She used to host swinger parties. She's an offer. Now she, she's a stylist. She's a very unique person. She focuses most of her time on uh, being seductive, teaching men and women human sexual behavior. My special guest today is real. Welcome to the show. Right now. Well, I guess should I introduce myself? Well, my name is Real, and um, well, you know, I've done a lot of things. Actually, I was born, you know, as a designer and a dancer. That's something that I know that I was born with as a kid, right? Um, so, where are, you, where, are you, where are you from? I'm originally from Flint, Michigan. I also went to an HBCU in Alabama, so I'm an Alabamian. I went okay. to Alabama State University, shout out to the HBCUs. And um, now I live in New York. Actually, I'm in, in the Bronx. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're in a, it seems like you're in a lot of, you have a lot of different experiences and a lot, a lot of different things. So how, and how'd you get into art? That's because, you know, as you can see, I'm in art. You can, as you can oh, see. Right. Yeah, you know what? It's kind of like, it's small, but no, I can, damn, now I'm looking at it. I can't really, really see it. See, it looks like it's interesting. But, it's, um, it's what? It's a woman uh-huh. with her legs open. Oh, shit. A, my glasses on. Oh, shit. Oh, with the vagina, but the, the flowers is covering the, the vagina. Is there some hands? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. I don't see a flower. Oh, well, I think. I mean, because we kind of Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So, look, when I, what got me into art, uh, 
Well, like I said, like I swear to God, I've always knew from a little girl that I was, I've been writing that on, since I learned how to write, designer and um, dancer. So I, I knew that, I knew what God blessed me with because I was already good at it, you know what I'm saying? It came naturally to me. Um, and then as I progressed and I grew into the field of uh, fashion and me, and also like for me having like a really good eye, right? I also, I was very interested in photography, although I don't take any photos. I'm like, I just, I see a lot of things. And then I was just like, you know what? I need to visit some museums and things of that nature. So that got me into, into loving art. So, you know, because it's like, it's, it's hand in hand, like art, fashion, yeah. like yeah. same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a form of expression. Yeah, I agree. But, but how'd you know, well, how did you get exposed to it? You, you got to, as a young, a, a young, uh, a, I mean, I guess a young woman or maybe a young teenager. How far does it go back? Get, get exposed to what? Art. Oh, wow. Ah. You know, I think that that happened, that happened at Alabama State, right? Cause let me tell you something. I'm originally from Flint, Michigan, like I said. Now okay. there, there's no culture. Like I didn't know anything about my culture, my ancestors, it's just something that just never was taught um, there. And but when I went to HBCU and I heard this man speak about the glories and the, and the beautification of black people and, and introduced us to so many different um, art forms and, and, and leaders and stuff like that, it kind of, it blew my mind. I'm like, okay, I gotta go a little, little deeper. And um, so after that, that's because I, I didn't actually graduate. I stayed there for like two years. And then I came, I went back home to Michigan. I stayed home for like six months. And I said, I'm moving to New York by myself. And when I moved to New York, that's when everything was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like New York, yeah, they'll definitely take you there. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. New York is uh, it's a little bit of everything in New York. A little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, well, what kind of town is Flint? I, I've never been to Flint. But it's, it's a small town. Quiet. It's small. Um, I think right now, I believe that it's, it's getting a little bit better. Wait, ha- wait, hold on. Because actually, when I grew up, right, I grew up. Now we don't call them blocks like they do here in New York. We say we live on the street. So the street that I lived on, I remember us skating in the street, us playing in the street. Everybody knew everybody on 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 the on the street. Like you know, like it was it was a glorious time. Like when you have to come in the house, you know your parents, everybody, everybody knew everybody. So we all knew that the swing in the house when it's time to come in the house. But it was also plagued with a whole lot of you know because everybody lived in the. Um, worked at the the automobile industry right yeah 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 That's a lot of people made their money either mm-hmm. you was doing that or you was doing hair because you know black women gonna get their hair you know what i'm saying so um as a kid growing up like it, it was it was i I'm, I'm glad that i grew up there due to the fact of, and now knowing new york like now i'm glad i didn't grow up here but um it was a glorious place. It's just that when the automobile collapsed, that 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 whole shit collapsed, the economy collapsed. And it, now, although it's building up, where I used to live, like in like a ghost town, all the houses is torn down. Damn. You know, like, like it's just it's it's horrible. It's in ruins. But however, you know, everything that comes down is is gonna blossom back up into something. So. Yeah. yeah, but there was yeah. no, as far as me learning about me as a, 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 a woman of African ancestry, it was none of that. You, 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 you what? You definitely was not exposed to that, and I don't even know if kids are exposed to that to this day. Damn. Then a lot, a lot of the schools are closed too. Like the school. Okay, let me tell you something too about Flip Flip. Like they don't have a lot of things. We skate a lot. We learn oh we can from skating motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? But um uh another thing too that we were, that we're very prideful of is that's high schools and stuff. So a lot of the high schools, it was only like four, Northwestern, Northern, Central, Southwestern. All of them is closed except one. Oh dang. And now, and now they're shipping all the kids. They open up some other some schools. But then they shipping the kids, the, the kids to like the 
like in a white area, which I don't think is a great, I mean, look, I don't know what people feel about um, integration, but yeah, I mean, it's a great yeah. thing. But black people no, need no. to learn about themselves. They need to learn about themselves. That, that didn't work out for us. Yeah, it definitely oh shit! Oh, they, 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 they got the water straightened out down there yet, man. You know. That's so wild. Let me tell you something. I'm also a cyclist. I'm riding my bike today. And I was thinking, you that is so wild you said that. I'm riding my bike and I was thinking like, this just popped in my head. I used to love taking drinking water from when, when I was a kid. You go to the to, to the faucet and go and drink water because the water was just so yeah. good. I remember, now mind you, I've been living in New York for three decades, so I went home went in the midst of that. Okay. So the water, it had a stench, and I'm a person who take a bath. My mother was like, look, I don't suggest you do that, but I, I was like, well, oh, God, some water gotta hit my body. You go in there like real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick and, and jump up like it was disgusting. So then you went like, like, from like, 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 they still oh. the water. That's uh, some that somebody needs to go to jail for that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was held accountable for that either. And you know, oh. I, uh, I I had watched a documentary me and my son when he was small, and it was they had been doing this shit. The government oh, stuff like that. it was in a in a rural area. Where it's mainly like a lot of Caucasians who lived over there, you know, they lived off the land, you know, they have their farms and stuff like that. They ran some type of pipe. Actual fire was coming out. They was killing their cattle, their um, uh, their uh, the grass, the trees. Like it was a horrible, horrible thing. So this ain't something new that these people been doing. Okay, okay, okay. A horrible gotcha, situation. gotcha. So how'd you get into um? Hosting swinger parties. That's like, how'd you even? Well, first off, how'd you even find out about it? <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. See, like I said, I always knew I was a dancer, and, and I had to take you back to Flint. I remember we some girlfriends. You know, you hanging okay. out with your friends. They was like, "What would you want to do that you would want your your parents to do?" They said what they said. I said, uh, "Be an exotic dancer, right? You know, uh, a stripper. You know." And so, um, and that's when I moved here. That was the first thing that I did because I, because I love dancing. Like I know I'm good at it. And um, so, as soon as I got to New York, um, I went to the strip club. And I mean, first I day, first week. Ah, uh, wait. You know, I can't really remember. But yeah, but that's how I made my money. I didn't, I didn't do nothing okay. else. I made my money, so it was it was quite early. I already that was the plan. However, oh, okay. I did I did say when I was a teenager that I didn't want my mother to know. Oh no, I call my I let them know that this is what I'm doing. Just in case if something was to happen to me. So uh, yeah, my, where, my where mother, did they what did they say? She didn't say anything. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh damn! Okay. Yeah, you actually you know, like yeah. You know, my mother isn't a really great communicator. Like, she kind of, she's silent. And I don't, you know what? And I think that comes from, that's just generational shit. Just like, yeah, did, I, don't know, I don't know if you've seen, they had this on The Breakfast Club. It was some people from, um, they, they like 90 something years old and 100 and something years old, who was a part of um, Black Wall Street and how- Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they couldn't talk about it. So I believe yeah. with, with my mom, because she she she's she's not a really they I think they just learned to be quiet or something. And oh yeah. Yeah, back in the day they people used to keep a lot of things to themselves because they um And they was raised, they was taught that way. Like, you know, it was do? uh they didn't want the word to get out what they were doing, basically. That's what that's what it stemmed from. Yeah, I mean, and also because of fear too. You well, know, that, well, that's another thing. But like, if um, they were very secretive because if the word got out, they would probably get killed. Exactly. Yeah. That's what my dad told. My dad told me that. Yeah, and that's exactly what those uh, the elders had said. So, yeah, yeah Mona, she, she, and um, not that she was not, she didn't really, I don't remember her saying anything. I told my mother and my father, so they, they definitely knew. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, I saw your your uh your latest video on YouTube. <laughs> you were dancing. That's yeah, that's, that's that's cool. You know, but but how did that lead? I guess some people would say that's the next progression is to start hosting parties. I, I've talked to somebody and they said, yeah, that's pretty much the next thing. Next thing, play. That's the next. Hey, you know, I'm already in the around the elements and around people that like being entertained. So why not throw your own party? That's it. Well, you know what? I never thought about it like that. Wait, so. what you mean? You talking about, you talking about as far as the swinger parties? Um, yeah, well, swinger yeah, parties? yeah, yeah. I talked to people and they was like, um, they might have been in uh, I, like I talked to a guy. And he he used to be a pimp back in the day, right? And I talked to a stripper. She used to strip, and she said, um, both of them said they started having you were swinger parties or um some type of exotic type of, of parties on their own. I mean, you, you know, if you're in any type of industry, you know, other things gonna open up because you're in that industry. So, um, actually, I didn't get introduced to becoming a, a host of the swinger party until after I finished um, uh, uh, dancing. Mind you, um, as an exotic, like I, I say exotic dance, I'm old school. So, um, uh, after I fin- I danced for maybe like I think six years straight. The one, let me tell you the one thing about becoming an uh, exotic dancer, like it's hard you, work. Yeah, um, well, not, not for me because I love dancing. So, um, and I like hard on your knees. And, and becoming like you said again, said again. Hard on your knees. <laughs> uh, no, See, no. That, that was that's that's now. That's not what we was doing back then. We just, oh, okay. we, we been to know, but we laying back. We on the pole, oh. you know what I'm saying? Okay. Everybody had their own little tricks. The knee okay. shit right now, we wasn't doing that back then. Okay. We okay. laid we laid back and, you know, opened it up. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Or, or bent over, you know, on all fours or something. Or, just, or once you learn, you have to learn how to, it, it's a finesse. See, this is what I be trying yeah. to teach women. Like it's not all this old hard ass shit, you know what I'm saying? And although that has its place, there's some yeah. great exercise to do as well. But it'll definitely build up your thighs if you can, you know, sit there and do that. Um, but it's it's a finesse game. But as far as the um, the swinger thing, like I have been finished with that, and um, I, I had a meeting with somebody. Um, I can't even remember, but I do remember the guy. Uh, I had a meeting with him. I I can't remember what it, it wasn't about the swinger parties. I don't know what it. I can't even remember. But anyway, met this guy. He was like, "Yo, I have a swinger party." Yo, he was like, "You interest? Would you? Would you do that?" And I was like, "Of course, you know." <laughs> and um, so I start. He, I start. I was hosting his parties, and then other people would know that I was hosting. I'll get hired to host at other parties. Now, at the swinger parties, there was a lot of things. Now. now in that place, that's where I became a stylist at um, on pornographic pornographic uh, films because I was like, I mean, like I said, fashion is what I do, and I was the people would be like, "Yo, you the best dressed person in here," even like dressed with like with almost nothing on. Like I never walked around naked. Like most. Now, most women don't walk around naked. They'll have on a towel. The men have on a towel or a robe or something like that. Um, but, you know, I would wear, like, you know, my little lingerie, you know, our sexy and hair and makeup and eyelashes and all that old things. Like, you know, I played a part. And um, so I had to, this guy came to me and was like, yo, you know, I, and people are regulars. You know, regulars. And so he was like, yo, you, I like the way you dress. Like, yo, I'm doing this film. Would you be interested in coming and styling the girls and the guys and I was like okay yeah sure you know so we talked to, we talked about it and you know running the ends and out about the, the payment and all this sort of shit and where it was happening at however due to the fact that this wasn't a huge budget um, you know I was very skeptical I had my shit with me I had it in the back no for real I had I had one in my in the back of my in the back of my pants and I also had something in my in my shoe, right? Just in case, you know what I'm saying? Because sex trafficking is real. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Oh, hold up, and, hold up, hold up. This was okay. when you went to meet up with the person. Yeah, when I because they they shot in a in a motel. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. So I had to have some protection. So that's how I, you know. But I had a meeting with somebody. I can't remember what was, what was it about. But then I met this guy, and he was like, yo, oh, how about you go these? And I was like, okay. Yeah. So how uh, how many people would show up at the parties on average? No, let me tell you something. Well, how, well, how long did you even do it? How, how long did it? Uh, I think I did for like three, four years. Listen, let me tell you something. This man made so much motherfucking money. I, was, I, I believe it. It, it, it was crap. It was the man was paying two fifty to get in the bitch. Oh. And not even, that's, not, that's not even. You, you're not even um, re- guaranteed that you're gonna have sex. So I oh, that's, yeah. some, nights, some nights the shit would be like this. Oh, damn. You walk like this. No lie. No this is lie. A, a, this a, a house uh, or no, what? Um, damn. It's, it's, it's in Midtown. You know, there's a lot of buildings, right? So I yeah. guess like, he, this is like, uh, so he, he t- turned this office building, this office floor, because you know, it's a huge building. So the floor that he was on, I guess like he, he gutted it out or whatever the case. And you know, formed it this way, that way, and okay. that's how that should work. But yeah, it'd be, it be a lot of men, a lot of men, a lot, a lot of married men, ladies. And you, you know, you ladies, y'all crack me up. Oh shit! <laughs> they be thinking that they understand men, but no, you. Really, no, they don't. No. Yeah, like they, 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 like, and sex for them, it doesn't Dang. necessarily have like an, an emotional attachment to it. They come there just to bust a nut because they want to fuck, just to just to yeah. get that expression off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't. I'm not like that. I can't. I can't. I don't have that mindset like that. Like most guys, what I have that? to. I have to. Um, a lot of guys, you know, they can fuck, have no mental attachment. They don't even have to be attracted to the woman. I can't do that. Mm. No. Wait, is that you now, or was, or what about you as a younger guy? Same. Same. Oh, okay. You know what? Yeah. That's, there are some men like that. I had talked to a, a guy. Oh, oh, damn! So I'm assuming. Um, I, I talked to a guy who was like, you know, because I talk, I hang, I hang around a lot of a men, and uh, he was like, yo, I'll do fucking threesomes for shit. He was like, yo, I can't be, you know. Fucking after the next dude, like, and I was like, yeah, that is some wild shit. But men do do that shit just like the rest. Yeah, I mean that's, man, that shit ain't all that. It's alright. There ain't nothing to brag about. To yeah, me. Have, you, have you ever had one? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's alright. I'll do it with people that I already know. But like with a somebody, a stranger, nah, it ain't gonna work because I don't know them. I, I'm not. I'm, uh, you know, I probably won't be able to, huh? You need emotional attachments to them in some way. Yeah, it has to be some type of connection. Okay. Otherwise, you know, I might not like her vibe. I might not like how she smell. It could be anything. Right, you know? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, uh, it, so it has to be some. I have to know them. You know, you know, some type of vibe. You know, but if if we're gonna meet up, like meet up uh, you know I, I come to your house and you open the door hi how you doing come on in let's get to it oh no no <laughs> that ain't gonna work somebody tried, somebody tried me like that one time like, okay. well it was a couple they said they, they invited me over and um as soon as i ring the doorbell they said oh hi how you doing come on in and then they said oh come back to the room right I went back to the room and she was naked. I'm like, it's all good. Take your clothes off. Well, wait a minute. No, no. No, you gotta, <laughs> no, you gotta slow oh, down, shit. man. <laughs> you man. know, that's not gonna work with me. <laughs> you know, another thing too that men gotta watch out for that I tell guys too. There be a lot of dudes that like to do that that's gay too. Oh, a yeah. Of, a lot of yeah. gay. Yeah. You know. Or why? I don't, you know, I don't understand. Let me tell you what I don't understand. I don't understand why a guy wants to watch me fuck his wife or his girlfriend. I don't understand that. I don't, I don't understand that. You know, that's, uh, 
I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's sexual appetite is different, but I find that I never really heard like a, a black man say that. I heard a, a, a Caucasian say some shit like that. This motherfucker told me, like he was a, a, a I might, I never had sex with a white man. I really don't think I could. Like, I don't like your skin. I don't like your skin. <laughs> no, 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 associates with motherfuckers so you know so he yeah, it was cool we was hanging out we was talking and um of course you know we started talking about sex and so he said that uh you know they weird he was like yo you want to yeah. have sex with me after i had sex with a black man i mean of course yeah. i put no shit like that but i was just like oh you weird yeah they know they know oh kind of wow yeah. weird yeah, it's yeah. different. It's different on that other side, man. Have you ever had sex with a Caucasian woman? Yeah. Uh, how yeah. was that? It's cool. It ain't. It ain't like being with a black woman though. It's it's not. It's not. Uh, it, of course, it depends on the the person. But um, I had a white woman. Yeah, I had a white woman telling one time it hits different. <laughs> so oh, it does. Oh, okay. I said, you know what? I, I believe you when you say that. <laughs> Wait, who said that? She said that. Yeah, she said that. She said when she's with a a, a, a black man, it, it the sex is is she gets stimulated differently versus being with a white guy. And I said, you know what? I believe you when you say that. If no ass, no buts about it. They already yeah. know that. Trying to fuck y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That- and, and white men, they, they try to like, don't even look my way. I turn around. I turn. I I had dudes who tried. White men try to like, nah, no. Huh, it usually happens on the job. Mm. On the job, boy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I hear about it a lot. White guys always making passes at y'all. Y'all the Marco. I can't see. I'm not. I don't. See, I can't see my. I don't like the way your dick looks. So I. I just. I don't like your hair. I don't like your skin. For me, you know what I'm saying? Like no. Like I just. Yeah, it's usually um the um the foreign black women usually uh lay up with the white guys. Oh yeah. Yo yeah. Haitians. Oh yeah. Oh my God! There was this. I don't know if you heard this story. I don't think I ever covered that shit. I should. But anyway, um, this dude and it, it, it's. <laughs> and I read two stories where it happened. These white in two separate occasions, but there was two Caucasian men went to Africa, fucking all these African women. Did, and he had AIDS. He gave all AIDS. Oh yeah, I heard about that a couple years ago. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. They uh, they different, man. They they different, man. They do a lot of they do <laughs> shit that I don't. Yes. They do things that I never thought about doing. I'm like, ah, damn, I never even thought about that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think they. I wonder, like, where like double penetration come from. I believe they probably came up with that. Cause like, yeah, oh, they came up with that. You have. I think that if a two men that do that, like, you kind of, you kind of gay. You gay in the moment. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to be touched by another man in yeah. any type of way. Yeah. Yeah, that's. No, I can't do that. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, that's no. that's and and as a woman, why you want why do you want wanna have sex like that? I mean you know, I, you know what it looked like it kinda of feel good though. I watched one, I was just like I watched the porn. Like can my you porn? Let me tell you ladies and gentlemen something. Like it takes a minute to find like a real good one because it's, it's a whole bunch of trash and edited bullshit that's out there. But I got one that's good. This two, this black man, this black woman, like, yo, I watched that shit for hours just on repeat. Just on repeat. Oh, but um I had watched one where it was double penetration and I was just although in my mind I'm like, yeah, y'all kind of gave me like kind of gay vibes, the two dudes. But and it, I was just like, it all you heard was moaning from all three of them. So I mean, it's very erotic, but it's like, do I really need to do that though? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, a lot of things, a lot of things I've seen and heard people do over the years. I've tried 
Uh, I thought about trying some of it, and once things were in motion, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pass. You know, one time my son, my son is 19, he asked me this when he could have been like 15. So, you know, I'm sure he watched porn and shit. Cause I told I said, you be careful of the shit that you watch. Everything isn't meant for you to watch. Now, my, let me tell you something. When I first moved to New York, New York was the XXXXX shit everywhere. Or like 42nd Street, 42nd Street was up, wasn't all flowers and daisy as and Broadway shows as it is right now. When I came, it was sex shit everywhere. People, when I first came, you know, because I'm a flint. We wave at everybody. Somebody say hi, we be hi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's probably pimps and shit. So, yeah. uh, so, so when I when I when I got off the fucking uh, thing and I got down there and I just saw like all this thing and I was just like, wow, I didn't know, I didn't even know what XX really because I'm from Flint. Like, now mind you, sexuality is not something that we talked about. Like, we no, don't we don't. No. And, and homosexuality back then, I didn't, I didn't, I had no idea of anything about no. gayness. Nothing. No. We, no. No, we didn't even have to think about it. We didn't know it existed until we were like teenagers. It was a gay guy down the street, and he yeah. died. He he got AIDS and died. No, I swear. Like in Michigan, I swear. To, like we, this is just how. Like we was just closed to. to yeah. Home. Like, I, we didn't have no clue. But my son, so so he had asked me like how. You, the, the comment that you made about like how you know some shit that you tried to try and when you guys have missed of it you're like no I don't really want to do that he had asked me he said mom uh, what's up with um people you know you know putting saliva in somebody else's mouth I said I oh. said, <laughs> yes no, I said that no, shit is no, no, it has no, no. that shit doesn't I think that so when someone does that then like this is my opinion I want to allow someone to do that to me and I wouldn't want to do that to, to someone else is that they're trying to humiliate you like why would somebody like what you're not getting any pleasure by taking some and spitting in someone else's mouth but listen but check this shit out though Lopez I heard some women say that they want all the motherfucking uh, fluids in their mouth. Yeah. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, wait, wait, even piss? They also talking spit too. They are not only like, okay, we understand the common shit, but yeah. the spit, like, <laughs> no. Yeah, that's. I'm like, no. That's some, yeah, that's some weirdo shit. It's definitely weirdo shit. On some real shit, like why yeah. people y'all don't people don't be understand like how this shit be how this shit is implemented in your brains to make you think that this is something that you need to try, <laughs> like yeah. but it's, but in actuality not really think for your fucking self. That's what I tell everybody, and you sh- and as a woman and also as a man have limits. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, people don't. A lot of people don't have no limits. <laughs> Because they just be going with the flow, you know. What I'm yeah, saying? they're not thinking for themselves. Yeah, I remember my dad used to always tell me everything is not for everybody. He used to say, he used to say that repeatedly, over every week, over and over. I heard this. I told. I heard this for the first eighteen years of my life. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know, know, you know, it's, but one thing about me as a parent, and when it comes to sexuality, and also because. Right now, like that's what we're talking about homosexuality. Like that's a, a whole thing. So I, oh. I told you about that. I'm like, look, let me tell you something. You have to watch some of these guys because some of them are gay. And they were trying to try you or they were trying to trick you. You gotta you and even if like cause he smoked weed, I know like he's he's smoking weed right now. I'm like, look, you always I don't give a, okay, you may want to smoke weed or whatnot or think that that's what you want to do right now. But always be in control, people. Always be in control of your own mind. You can't, don't get so like this. Let me, I have a story for you. I'm at this party, right? I'm vending. Um, this guy told me I can come and bring, you know, the name of my brand is Real Nice Barbie. I'm rocking one of my crop top sweatshirts right now, ladies. But anyway, so I go to the party and I'm very observant. I sit back and I watch people. I just like to watch. So I'm looking, this dude, he drunk as shit, like drunk. Like everybody see him drunk. His friend, who he was with, he keep doing like this, trying trying to give him something to drink. I was like, 
Ooh. <laughs> he tried to fuck him, suck his dick or something, or have something. That's a red flag. <laughs> but the oh, guy yeah. is drunk. That's why I, t- I tell my son that story. I'm like, look, you have to, or getting drunk is fucking stupid. And, yeah. and also, you and if you find yourself in a situation like that, be around like family. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you, you can't even trust family. So you can't it. trust a lot of them even now. Freaky motherfuckers. <laughs> so, but then, again, well, listen, let me tell you something. Hurt people, people who've been sexually assaulted, tend to sexually assault other people. Yeah. Yeah. We, as black people, we really have to have this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we really and truly, truly do. And also, um, uh, the one thing I just recently had my last talk where, um, ladies, my next one is going to be, it's, I, it was open to everybody, but the next one is because it's going to be around Mother's Day. It's going to be for women. And what I learned was, is that there's a lot of women who never masturbated. I mean, grown. These bitches is grown. You oh, know yeah, 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 yeah. And they never touch their pussy, like yeah. with, with, a, with, with a with a with a uh, with a vibrator or something, like never. No. no. But as a woman, it does take a woman a minute to use your hands, like it's like a black woman. It takes because it, it takes us a minute to do that. Because it took me a long time to to uh, to touch myself. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Um, but I was introduced to a vibrator. It was such a slick way. Shout out to my son's father. You know what I'm saying? I want to shout this motherfucker out. Wow, this the monk monk monk. He bought me a vibrator, yo, and I got addicted to that one. I was like, oh, man. Like, every oh, shit. Every night, every, <laughs> every, every day. Oh, Lord. The crazy shit was, the hot shit was, to make him, like, I was like, yo, that was smooth. I like how you played that. He was fucking somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God. <laughs> that was a good one. I said, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never heard that one before. <laughs> I was addicted to that. Yo, you get the ladies, you get a vibrator. Like, mind you, it has, it's totally up to you, whatever your you got to figure out whatever your speed is. Like I'm a bitch, I like to start up, up slow, because you know, because once I once you have an orgasm, like for well, like I don't want to have a multiple one. I like to have multiple orgasms when I'm with somebody, not with a, a tool. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Like, what, what the fuck is that? You like know, the real, you like the real shit. Right, I need a man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, yeah find your speed and like and play with it. And also, I would also suggest. Also, your nipples too. Let me tell you, men, something. Like, a lot of men don't know how to handle a woman's nipples. Now, I breastfed my son, so I definitely don't like sucking. And at, before I even had my son, men, young boys, you know, I mean, not young, well, when I was young, so I must be younger, you know, dudes my same age, uh, they, they would suck. And that shit never, like, did nothing for me. Like, what the fuck? But, but that might you have to talk to the woman. That's why conversations is important. But, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's if you know what you like. If you don't know yeah. what you like, like it, it's you know, it, 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 it can be a little a a, a clumsy conversation. So it, yeah. it's important that you masturbate. And I would suggest every woman to get like a a, a bullet or a, a vibrator. I wore my shit out so much to where I wore the color off that bitch. For real, I was like, <laughs> hey. I'm not lying. I think everybody should know their bodies. Yes, that's that's a fact. I like to know their bodies, you know. So how? So when it comes to being a stylist, mm-hmm. you well, you have your own clothing. Uh, you said you you know you got it on. So how? I mean, it's just for women only, or what? Well, I, yeah. However, um, right now I do have some hoodies um, and some crop top t-shirts. Now, now that industry is just so, oh God. It's definitely racist without a doubt. And oh I yeah, I heard. When I, whenever, let me tell you something, when I graduated from fashion school, from college, I couldn't even find a job. Y'all would see other people I went to school, we all beating the pavement. The black girls would never find a job. But the, the the Caucasian women, the gay men, oh they they in there. But the black women, no, especially I'm a black woman. Like I'm not check 
changing myself for you. I'm not putting on no wig. I'm not wearing my hair straight. I wear, I'm normally a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna call myself the cornrow queen because I keep my hair at cornrow. So I think as soon as they see me, they like you know I don't know what their thoughts is, but I never got a job. Like just just no. Nah, usually like, um everybody that I know that can. That call himself a stylist, they can sew and design. They usually doing their own thing. Yeah, but then, then wait, hold on. You know, I'm, I'm very sensitive about the Cause everybody who do that shit don't got no style, bitch. You oh, got, I, I'll put my money up, bitch. You, what, let's meet up. What, what, where you want to do? What we doing? And I bet you, I murder your ass. Like I'm. Just well, you know, every. I mean, everybody's not everybody's not on the same level, of course. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I take yeah. that shit real personal. So, but uh, yeah. but yeah, like it's, it was crazy. Like it, it was really the case. So then I just was like, after like two years of me beating the pavement, and then when I did find found the job, like they gave me an internship, an internship. Bitch, I already had an internship, but it was a paid internship with some some low pay. I'm a whole single. Well, I wasn't a single. Well, because my son's father was helping me. So I, I don't want to say that I was a single parent. I'm not going to say that. He just wasn't in the home. But, but he definitely participated in, in his child's life as well as helped financially. That's so, good. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I just, they just wouldn't. But that that, that industry is definitely it's racist. Cut, it's cutthroat. Is and bias. Ain't no, especially cut. if you're a black woman coming with your blackness. Oh, they... No. Yeah. You, you, hey, you, wait a minute. I read. Wrong. I read. You said um, you tried to be a sexologist. What what happened with that? Ah. Uh, oh wait. Um. Uh, so they. It's this one. What the? I don't even want to say their name. I can't even remember their name. To where you can so call me uh, certified. But then I was yeah. thinking, I don't need white people to tell me what I know about sexuality. And then I wouldn't want to learn nothing from, about <laughs> sex from you. No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> and I went to the first the lady was like real nasty over the phone. I was just like, oh, like, oh, damn. You know, because I don't call, I don't switch my voice up. You know, I, I talk like how I talk, but you know, but in a professional manner, you know, and I'm, I mean, I'm cursing on here, but you know, not when I'm being a professional. So, not that I'm not professional, you know what I'm saying? So, um, <laughs> She, she was really nasty. I guess she could tell that I was a black woman, whatever the case. And then I was talking, to, so she assigned me to some, like, I don't, to someone, so I guess to help me with the the um, the process of of, of um, getting uh, certified, all that yeah, stuff. Right. Or, or yeah, whatever they call it. So, and that person just kept saying my name wrong. I said, Oh boy. No, <laughs> oh, simple. Oh, like, how you keep saying? Yo, it was it was just crazy. So I said, you know what? No. I done hung up. Yeah, I'm just I'm not. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They they yeah. real they they weird and and you're weird and I don't need to be certified by Caucasians to say that I'm a sexologist. Like yeah. No. So what brought you online? How, you started the channel. What what made you do that? Um, because you know what, <laughs> being in a sex industry and also just talking to so many people about sex and then like looking at women right so many women sisters have like an issue or struggling with their own femininity and their sexuality they don't know how to embody it and when they do embody it i find like people can be jealous of you you know what i'm saying like it's, it's a whole thing it's crazy. you talking about other women yeah, from other women, men. Can oh yeah, them. oh yeah. And sometimes men can definitely be intimidated. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, what I'm by a woman who is like, uh, that's 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 embodies her sexuality. Like we are oh, all yeah. creatures. So um, I was just looking around and I was just like, you know what? But I know I have something to say. I have so many stories and. Let me just start sharing this. Now, Mike, when I first started, I've been online for like a minute, but uh, due to the fact that, you know, we we watch TV. I, I love TV because I love stories and shit like that uh, and movies. And we and you know what what we see, like it plays in in in, in your subconscious. 
and when I first got on, like I was like upright and just, and not being myself. You know what I'm saying? And Why? I was like, then after, because of the shit that you see and yo, TV is a powerful medium. Seriously. Oh yeah. And also, as a black person, you are always t- told to dial to to dial down who you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, that don't that that don't work online that well. I mean, well, see, but I've been doing. I, I had to leave a lot of me. I was like, oh my god, Lord. like I just wasn't being myself. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, people. Of that. Yeah, people will see through that if you do that online. They be like, oh, she's just uh. She's just a character. She's trying. She's she's trying to be like Fifty Cent <laughs> or some of these rappers. <laughs> or, or whatever. You know what I'm so, or, so yeah, you can only you can only do that but so long, and then <laughs> people they'll, and and, the, and they'll, people will die off, and then you have to start all over again. Yeah, but then again, you know another thing too. I find about one of the high too, which is so funny. It's like the, the one where I get like a lot of views. I mean, you know, I don't get like a lot of views, but you know, I'm consistent because I know I got something to say. I mean, you, some of you bitches just gonna be late to the motherfucking party, but it, it's, it's okay. Um, you said that me. whenever you talk about anything that's like in the that's like celebrity, uh, that's when you get the the views. Oh like, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, or if you're attached to like a big brand, big institution, or, or, or talk about a celebrity, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Any type of um, gossip, yeah. anything that's contrary. If you haven't, ladies, if you have a bachelor party, and girls night Sally fan, or or Sally fan, or whatever, or Sally fan, I don't really do party, so bachelor party, girls night Sally fan. Or you are having it, or an event um, that's related to sex and human sexual behaviors, I'm available for hire. You can go to my website, which is seductive art.com. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to um, get dialogue about sex and human sexual behavior, because that's what I talk about over there. I am also a designer and a stylist. Um, you can go to I, I, right now. I'm currently selling on Etsy, so you um, which is shop forward slash shop real nice. The name of my brand is Real Nice by Real. And uh, yeah, wait. Oh, and also before we go, can I share this real quick story? This is about when I was an exotic dancer. So for anybody for my younger ladies who's thinking about becoming a stripper and an ex, I say exotic dancer. So um, okay, it was this one. Now mind you, I'm fresh from Flint, right? Fresh living in New York. And um, there was this one place where I made a, a whole lot of money. I'm, 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 yo, we, everybody in there made money. And my, my, back in the day, it wasn't no fake body shit. Everybody had natural shit. So um, we, I made a lot of money. And also we used a lap dance too. You made a lot of money doing lap dance. Lap dance was the most disgusting, horrible thing like to, to do. You know what I'm saying? But them motherfuckers would be lined up like, bitch, you gonna sit on this thing? You know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna lie, I did do that. And that's why I made a bulk of my motherfucking money. Um, is you, you can make a lot of money. Make sure that learn about finance and financial literacy. Because I remember one time I counted, literally counted. I have a, a money machine. I'm, I'm talking about this back in the day. I'm talking about phone. This is talking to dude. He was like, what you do? I'm like, I'm doing super, 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 super. He was, I was like, I'm counting my money. He was like, and we on the phone for hours. He was like, yo, you still counting your money? I had counted $50,000, like just counting like this. And and I probably made a million dollars because after that I stopped just counting, like for real, like I just I just stopped. And but I was really ignorant because I didn't do anything with that money. Lady, no. And made, like no. invest invest your money. Now, don't just put it in the bank. The bank is not the way. Look, you have yo, you want your money to grow. Learn yeah. about financial literacy. That's that's important. And another key thing too, so this when I was fresh out, just fresh in New York, um, met this guy, he was just, he was tipping me crazy. Lopez, just tipping me crazy. Then he hit me with the, uh, yo, I'll take you home. And I was like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, 
I don't know what the fuck I'm thinking. I'm young. I'm dumb. So I was like, okay. And my still in a flip state of mind, right? Uh, so I get in the car. Mind you, I'm, I'm still not familiar with everything. My I, at the time I lived in Harlem, where I was. This club was in Queens, and so I remember, like, I know what Harlem looked like because you know I was I know to be observant, right? So I'm looking around. We were around. I was like, yo, I thought you said you taking me home. He was like, no, you going with us? I said no, and my shit was crazy. Another man was driving. I didn't even see his face, but I remember the dude that said that he was going to take me home, right? He said the passenger side. So he, they parked the car, the, the dude goes in the Bronx store, and I was like, yo, and I, I'm looking around to get out, so to, to try to find like a, a um, the subway, but I, there, there was no train station around, and I'm telling the, the who never, this guy never turned around. I said, could you please take me to, take me home? He told me, he said, I don't got nothing to do with that. I said, please take me home. Now mind you, this man went, the dude who said he was taking me home, went inside, who knows what he went inside his apartment to get, or whatever the fuck, right? I'm pleading with the dude, he was like, look, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I said, please, please take me home, because he said he was taking me home. Like, that's what he said, I'm believing that's what he said. So. The dude get back in the car. I was like, yo, can you please take me home? Because you said you would take me home. I'm looking around. So I'm like, yo, I'm going to jump out as soon as I see a, a, a train station. But there was no train station. But keep in mind, people, y'all say, why did not why not just get out? But just 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, I got tons of money on me. But however, let me tell you something. Even at that hour, I always dressed like a bum. Like, I, you, you couldn't tell that I was a female. Like, I had my hat, like some bummy clothes, all that shit. So... I'm looking, and so I'm, I'm scared still, although I'm dressed that way and it probably would fit into the crowd that's out at this hour, I'm still nervous because I know what's, what I got. So um, I'm like, please, please. So they went somewhere and they just parked, right? I turned around and looked. I saw, luckily, it was a train station. I jumped up. I got out the car and looked back. I just walked. Some said, yo, where your money at? My dumb ass. I left my money. They still sitting there. Oh, damn. Yo, I go back, open up the car door, reach in. They ain't turn around. My my my, my little purse that I kept my money in was in. I grabbed that and I um and, and I just walked around. I didn't even I didn't turn back to, to look or, or nothing like that. So thank God, because you might the people they could have been sex traffickers. They could have raped you. So the, the point of that story is, young ladies, you get into that into that into this business. Don't go nowhere with anybody. That's a trap. The man trying to, if he's he tipping you, I mean, it's nice that they tipping you, but for you to agree to get in the car with him, learn from my mistake. Thank God. Thank God. Because when they say God take up, take uh, care of babies and fools, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, like old people, whatever the saying is, that, that, that I came out of that unscathed. So do not find yourself in situations like that. That's also a scam. Don't ever get in the car with anyone. That's a good way to end it. So like, share this episode. All links will be found in the show notes. Until next time, we're out. Peace.